The competition is still far away. We have a more separate training. We don't always train with Tessa and Scott or Gabrielle and Guillaume. But then as competition approaches, the closer we get to Skate Canada and to NHK, we'll be training more with Tessa and Scott and the other teams that will be going to those competitions with us because we're all kind of sharing the same energy. We all have a similar training plan. So we're tired on the same days and we're ramping up on the same schedules. It really helps build the camaraderie and a, and a feeling of competition so that when we go to Regina, we'll be feeling already in that mindset and it feels very comfortable. For every competition, there's a time to really train hard and you want to peak for that event at a time. It allows your body also to rest. If you just build all the way up to competition and then compete on top of all that, your body's exhausted. So especially now we've got a few weeks, we're going to be building in the beginning and the, the load will lighten a little bit as we get closer to competition. The recipe kind of stays the same for every competition, whether it's Worlds, Olympics, Nationals, it's we try to treat every event as if it's as important. And so we train the best we can and the smartest we can for each event. Coming back from Salt Lake City, we had one week that we had to come back and train because we would generally take the week right after competition more easy. But we had plans the following week for the Team USA Media Summit. We had to go to some doctor's appointments. So we kind of had to shift around our schedule. So right from Salt Lake City, we came back and we trained massively hard for five days and then took last week off to just kind of give our body a chance to go down because you just can't stay up at a high intensity for so long. It just depends. After Skate Canada we don't have a, a lot of time before NHK. The main objective is as soon as we're done with free dance at Skate Canada we're going to work to let that experience go be as relaxed as we can on the day after competition, the day of travel, sleep on the plane, make sure that we get everything kind of in place so that we have groceries, so that we have all those little things and we can get right back into our daily plan. And it's the uh, extra things that we have to modify. When we only have a week or two weeks between competitions, we have to skate, we have to stay on the ice. In those times leading up into competition or coming home, we need to stay home, relax, rest. It's kind of, you live in this selfish bubble <laughs> where you kind of have to turn yourself off. You don't really communicate with your friends or your family. You just need to save all of your extra energy to get back on track. So I guess that's how we combat fatigue that happens after a competition. I guess we have to learn to accept the fact that we're gonna feel bad. Inevitably, you have this emotional high at competition, and after that, it becomes a low. You have to just kind of live in that low for a couple days, knowing that you'll be fine, that it'll go back up. But if you try to fight against that tired, fatigued feeling, you end up either getting sick, getting too stressed, you end up hurting yourself in the long run. So you kind of just have to accept that you're gonna feel really crappy for a few days, <laughs> and just keep going. Osteopathy is more about getting the muscles to react over physically manipulating the body. It's more about creating the connection between your body and what it needs to do as opposed to just manipulating it and moving things where they need to go. An osteopath will generally take the time to teach your body or give it sensations and teach it to memorize feelings and function in a different way. It's about more about manipulating the energy of the muscle rather than just the structure of it. I work with both a physiotherapist and a osteopath. For me, when there's a really acute problem and something specifically is very tense and it hurts a lot, then I'll go and see this guy named Jay Kiss, and he is a physical therapist. He specializes in ART, active release therapy, which is very painful. It's a lot of pressure and a lot of physical manipulation. It's very intense, but it has very immediate results of pain relief, of muscle relief, and so he is the guy you call when something tweaks and you need it to be better right away. But then we also go about prehab therapy with our osteopath who, as Zach says, takes the time to watch you move, analyze your body. Right now I'm working with someone three days a week. He watches me do very simple things and sees movement patterns where maybe we don't move very symmetrically. In skating you might be right side dominant and you become very good at doing one thing on your right and another thing on your left so he really tries to analyze your body and see which patterns he can break down and kind of reteach you to do everything equally.